Hi there and welcome to 272analytics.com's tutorial on how to carry out a meta-analysis of odds ratios in Stata. In order to do so, the first thing you'll need to do is install the metan, M-E-T-A-N, user written command in Stata. In order to do so, you'll just type in SSC space install space metan. Press enter. Now I already have it, so I'm going to get the feedback that it's already installed for me, but if you don't, you will need to install this code in order to uh, be able to carry out the procedures that I'm going to show you today. Okay, so let's get going by creating three variables and 13 observations and you're going to see the reason for that in a minute. So my first line of code set OBS 13 just creates 13 empty observations. Now I'm creating three variables as you can see here using the gen command gen OR equals zero uh, and this is going to be my odds ratio uh, ratios I should say, then gen LCI which is the lower confidence interval and finally gen UCI which is the upper confidence interval and as you'll see in a minute these are just empty. Um, these are just placeholders for the data that we're now going to insert. So let me show you what I have in mind. I'm working with a study here that I found online and it is uh, as you can see the title it's a relationship between peer victimization, cyberbullying, and suicide in children and adolescents. It's a meta-analysis. And within this meta-analysis, there are nine studies, but actually 13 odds ratios, because some of the studies have more than one odds ratio. Here, for example, a boys versus girls. And here, we have our 13 point estimates for our odds ratio. Within the parentheses on the left-hand side, we have the lower confidence intervals, and on the right hand side we have the upper confidence intervals. Now what I've done, I've created a bunch of code that you can get from uh, 272analytics.com that will actually allow you to replicate what I'm doing here. So do not be daunted by the amount of code I'm gonna I'm gonna paste here in a second. You can go ahead and, uh, and copy it yourself from the website. Let me just enlarge my window so you can see what I have here. So basically what I'm doing with all this code is I'm taking in the values that I just showed you from the meta-analysis and pasting them into Stata. So let me show you how this works. Like for example, I have my 13 point estimates for odds ratios and let me see if I can't pull that up for you again. Here for example, we see that in the first study the odds ratio is 2.54 and here you can see that I'm taking that point estimate and also feeding it into Stata. Um, so I've done I, I've done sort of 13 lines of code for each variable. So here are the point estimates for the odds ratios, followed by the lower confidence interval figures, and then finally the upper confidence interval figures. And when all this code is input we're going to see it get into stat in just a moment. Let's go back and edit. So here you go. So basically, instead of going in and typing these by hand, uh, I just put in code that you could, for example, go in and, and paste in yourself and, and take care of it that way. Now, here comes the key code that's going to generate the meta-analysis of the odds ratios. So the first thing, and I'm indebted to David Fisher, by the way, who, who used the same... Uh, variable names here uh, and code on uh, posting to the Stata blog, I think. So what I've done here is I'm creating uh, some log transformations uh, of my three variables, of the point estimate of the odds ratio, of the lower confidence interval, and the upper confidence interval, and then I'm issuing the metan command here. Okay, as you can see it's metan, L-N-O-R, for the log transformed odds ratio followed by LN uh, LCI for the log transformed lower confidence interval followed by LN UCI the log transformed upper confidence interval comma E form effect parentheses OR in caps and just press enter so now we're going to get a graph to here in a moment which we can start with uh, these are nice graphs because you can you know you can go ahead right click uh, copy these and, and transfer them right over um, just right off the bat here, you know, we would expect if there were no difference between suicide attempts uh, 
between adolescents who had been exposed to cyberbullying and adolescents who had not been exposed to cyberbullying, we would ins we would expect uh, these kind of 95% confidence interval spans to overlap here substantially with one. They do not. As you can see, they're all just about here to the right of one, um, quite substantially to the right of one. And the odds ratio tells us that uh, an adolescent who has been cyberbullied is about 2.8 times more likely to attempt suicide than an adolescent who has not been cyberbullied. And so right down here where my mouse is, that is our pooled odds ratio estimate. And up here you can see all the point estimates from the different studies and the 95% confidence intervals from those studies. Uh, note that in using the methan command we automatically uh, ascribe different weights to these studies. As you can see the studies that have a tighter 95% confidence interval are ascribed more weight because those are the higher sample studies. Um, and this study for example which has a huge huge 95% confidence uh, interval uh, doesn't get too much weight in determining our final uh, pooled uh, odds ratio estimate over here. If we go back to the Stata Interactive window, we'll see that there's also a table here repeating much of the same information. Uh, something very handy from this table that didn't show up in the graph itself is our test of the null hypothesis that the odds ratio here, or the effect size, uh, if you want to call it that, is 1. So as I mentioned earlier, and as, as you should know from um, maybe stats class or, or, or so forth, an odds ratio of 1 would indicate essentially no difference between the compared groups. So in the study from which I just took data, the two groups were adolescents who had been cyberbullied and adolescents who had not. And so because our p here is less than 0 0.05, we're going to go ahead and reject this uh, null hypothesis, and you know we're going to go ahead and conclude that this is a significant odds ratio. You don't necessarily need this information here because if you come up and look at the 95% confidence interval, you'll notice that one is not between these two numbers. Okay, if one were here somewhere. Okay, if one were in the confidence interval for the pooled OR, then we could conclude that there might not be a significant effect. But here we see that there is uh, quite a significant effect after all. And that is how you go about pooling odds ratios in Stata. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you, and I would like to invite you to visit 272analytics.com for access to all our free statistics tutorials in Stata, SPSS, R, eViews, and Minitab. Here at 272analytics.com we provide data consulting primarily to graduate students. Therefore we work very closely with you in order to perfect your Chapter 3 and Chapter 4. That means helping you design surveys, uh, getting your data input, assisting you with fashioning appropriate research questions and hypotheses, uh, getting your data, extracting them, transforming them, cleaning them, uh, putting them through analysis, uh, interpreting them, explaining them to you so that at the end of the day you know exactly what story your data tell, why they matter, what they mean in a manner that lets you write a, a perfect chapter 4 uh, following a perfect chapter 3 and lets you defend your dissertation or thesis with complete confidence. We provide ethical consulting. It's not a writing service, so you will be responsible for taking our blueprint, our assistance, our consulting, and transforming them into an appropriate academic project for yourself. I'd also like to remind you that we provide the same services to undergraduate students who are working with quantitatively oriented assignments. Thank you so much for listening, and have a great day.